Welcome everyone uh, to this uh, evening uh, prayer. Uh, I'm going to pray for the Senate opening in Rome tomorrow. So hope uh, prayer will make everything go smoothly. Let's begin uh, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, come to our assistance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And to four in one, the Lord is great, our God is high above all gods. Praise the name of the Lord, praise Him, servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord, in the court of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing a psalm to his name, for he is loving. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, and Israel for his own possession. For I know the Lord is great, and our Lord is high above all gods. The Lord does whatever he wills, in heaven, on earth, and in the seas. He summoned clouds on the ends of the earth, make lightning produce the rain. From the treasury he sent forth the wind. The firstborn of Egyptian he smote, from man and beast alike. Signs and wonder he worked in the midst of your land, O Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants. A nation in their greatness he struck, kings in their splendor he slew, Sire the king of the Amorites, Og the king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan. He let Israel inherit their land, on his people the land he bestowed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is great, our God is high above all gods. And from two, Son of Israel, bless the Lord. Sing a psalm to his name, for he is loving. Lord, your name stand forever, unforgotten from age to age. For the Lord does justice for his people. The Lord takes pity on his servants. Pagan idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouth but they cannot speak, they have eyes but they cannot see. They have ears but they cannot hear, there is never breath on their lips. The Maker will come to be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Sons of Israel, bless the Lord. Sons of Aaron, bless the Lord. Sons of Levi, bless the Lord. You who fear him, bless the Lord. From Zion, may the Lord be blessed, he who dwells in Jerusalem. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, World without end. Amen. Sons of Israel, bless the Lord. Sing a psalm to his name, for he is loving. And if one three, O people, come and adore you, O Lord. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the ages. Who shall not fear and glorify your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship you, for your judgment has been revealed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. 
Amen. All people will come and adore you, Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled under foot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, put it under a bushel basket or on a lampstand and to give light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord At this point, I want to uh, share with you uh, a little bit uh, from Bishop Sebastian about this synod uh, that's coming up. So let's watch uh, a video uh, that Bishop Sebastian uh, have uh, produced. Could you just walk, walk, walk with us, uh, Bishop, uh, and and let us know what is this whole synod of bishops all about? Uh, a little bit about its history, a little bit of what it means uh, to help our our viewers understand uh, the invitation of the Holy Father. Okay, so let us start with something very down to earth. Um, I have never attended a synod, so I am in some ways. Uh, a bit like you, Glenn. Uh, I've never attended. I've been a bishop for 10 years. I've never attended a synod in my entire life. Okay. And uh, that itself shows uh, how unique uh, this uh, synod is, or this word synod is. And I, I dress to kill today. Uh, you can see the way I'm dressed. Uh, because um, as president of the Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, I will be the only bloke uh, for the whole of Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei, representing all of you at the Synod in Rome in 2023. And when we are there, 
Uh, we will be maybe about 300 bishops from all over the world. And uh, so it's really uh, the whole world, the whole Catholic world coming together with Pope Francis uh, represented by bishops, okay? That's why, that's why it's called the Synod of Bishops. Huh? And What does uh, a synod mean, Bishop? Uh, tell okay. us what, what is, what is this, the word synod that we use. Uh, for a lot of people, it will sound like Greek, which okay. it is. But what, what does it mean? <laughs> so the word synod by itself is a Greek word. It's not an English word, okay? But it has been borrowed by the English language probably. And in its uh, simple meaning, it simply means meeting, council, gathering. Okay, and um, so the Pope uh, is the only guy who can call for a synod. No one else can do it or has the authority or the power to do it. Only he can call for a synod of the entire church. Okay, and uh, so as I told you, all of us will be dressed in black except him. He will be dressed in white. Okay, so... Um, the word synod, a Greek word which means council or gathering or meeting, uh, has also over the years uh, come to mean a journeying together in the English language. Journeying together. You may say, oh, okay, it's bishops and the Pope journeying together. But what is unique about the synod, uh, the coming synod, uh, with Pope Francis uh, 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 as, the, as the main driving force, he wants all of you to be involved. Well, that's the difference, okay? He wants oh, as come many today. people. Huh? We'll and come to that later, Father. Okay, uh, we'll come to bishop. that later. So the other word that I want to introduce here is a Latin word which means vade mecum. Huh? Vade simply means walk. Mecum means with me. So Pope Francis is telling each one of you, uh, Catholics at home and beyond, I want you to walk with me in this journey towards the Synod of 2023. And of course, we will have to slowly unfold, unpack what synodality means. Somehow it means we are going to walk together with Pope Francis. And he's going to ask you, uh, your comments, your, your feelings, your insights on a certain number of things which we will talk about later. But usually there are, there are some phases, we call them the phases of, of uh, a synod. There's, there's a kind of a, a preparatory phase, there's a kind of a discussion phase, then there's also uh, the implementation phase. Um, there's a, going to be a great... Uh, uh, process uh, in this preparatory phase for this upcoming synod. Um, if you could help us understand a little bit, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, what's going to take place? Uh, what's this preparation going to be uh, in in the view of the 2023 uh, Synod on Synodality? Yeah, so don't be, um, you know, be led away by, because there's a lot of technicalities involved in answering all these questions. Huh? There's a lot of discipline involved in answering all these questions. As Clarence so clearly said, uh, there are three phases. Huh? The first is the consultation phase. The second is the discussion phase. And the third is the implementation phase. Now, what is unique about this particular synod? In the past, much of these three phases involved only the bishops, okay? To what extent the bishops uh, consulted all of you is anybody's guess, okay? To what extent? But this time, the Pope is putting a lot of emphasis and uh, to the, especially via the bishops. He depends on us to get this down to the grassroots, okay? Uh, and, and he has come out with a whole lot of of very simple uh, uh, ways in which this consultation phase can reach the rock bottom of the church, can reach the rock bottom of the church. That means people like Glenn and, and all of you at home, okay? And not just the bishops and the clergy and so on and so forth. So he wants it to be really participatory. And with the modern means of communication, 
this is very, very possible today. It's very, very possible. So from now, actually, we are going to launch it on October the 17th. Mm -hmm. in two in three weeks time okay who is we the whole church every bishop has been encouraged to launch this process on the 17th of october in this year 2021 and uh and we the bishops of malaysia singapore brunei god willing will launch it from our cathedrals on the 17th of uh, october okay and once it is launched, it will go through the, the phase of consultation. And it's all very, met, met, it is very systematic. It's very systematic. It's not left to chance. It's not left to, you know, it's very systematic. There is a, a kind of a process that will be slowly explained to you uh, after the 17th of October. And we have set up a committee one from each diocese, 11 of us under the chairmanship of the Executive Secretary of the Catholic Bishops' Conference, Charles Bertil. And actually, I have the names of all the 11 representatives. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I don't need to mention the names. And this group of 11 persons, together with Charles Bertil, and maybe myself whenever I'm consulted, will help the 11 dioceses to bring this message down to the grassroots. And grassroots means VCs, grassroots means families, grassroots means young people, old people, whoever, okay, parish councils, uh, church leaders, clergy, religious, laity, every Tom, Dick and Harry, okay. Uh, at least theoretically, we hope it will happen because that's what the Pope wants. Okay, uh -huh. that's what he wants, and you and I just obey. That's it. Get it done. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> simple as that. And and I declare here that we will obey. That's it. Amen. Obey the Holy Spirit through Pope Francis. He's pleading with you. He's he's begging you. Please walk with me. Journey with me. Uh, and yes. and and we will do it slowly slowly but surely bishop before you go into the into the, into the processes uh, before you go into the processes you talked about a kind of a launch on the 17th of october uh, in every diocese uh, possibly in all the cathedrals uh, but just prior to that one week before that pope francis himself will launch it uh, from the vatican for the universal church now, we, we don't know how that's going to look like, um, but if you could give us a little bit of insight, at least for the Diocese of Penang, uh, what will you be doing to launch this? Clarence is absolutely right. Huh? Pope Francis will launch it one week before the 17th of October from St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. One week later, 17th of October, every blooming bishop must launch it okay throughout the whole world uh, and that those are the instructions every blessed bishop la, and we are blooming because this is a fantastic time to be a bishop okay and to be in leadership okay that's why we are blooming huh? okay i like the so, way you put it <laughs> <laughs> so we'll launch it what will i do uh, i will have a mass at the cathedral of the holy spirit here in penang on the 17th of october at 9 a.m and I have prepared actually a message, uh, a pastoral letter to be uh, read out in wherever, in all the churches, not just in my diocese, but even beyond. And uh, then we will have some little mass, of course, as usual, but launch it on the 17th. And the first phase begins on the 17th of October and will carry us until about uh, February next year. By February next year, uh, we have to collate all the findings from the various dioceses and our central committee of 11 of us together with Charles Bertil, the secretary and myself, we will look at the and collate that stuff and we will present it to the Bishop's Conference who will finalize it and send it to Rome by April next year. Okay, so the consultation phase is from now, October, till about April. 
Uh, and uh, after that, the bishops will have to pick it up and look at it, endorse it, send it to Rome, and Rome will tell us from there how they will proceed. But while all this is going on, uh, uh, I can tell you that actually they have even established two emails, okay, for anyone who wants to contribute, to participate, to say something uh, that is that is close to their heart about get through the official channels. They have established two emails. We have established two emails where anyone can put in their comments, their responses. Uh, you can show it on the screen if you want. One is called synodus at synod.vatican. Uh, that is one of the emails. Okay. For those who are not able to participate, in, the di in their diocesan synod processes, which will involve uh, the BECs, the leaders, and so on and so forth, huh? but have something to share directly, okay, without going through the official channels uh, to our bishops' conference, or even directly to the Pope, uh, to the synod office at the Vatican, they can do so at executive secretary, uh, who will handle it for us, uh, exec -E -E at cbcmsb.org or okay if you don't think that we fellas will pass it on and we will sit on it and you know then you can even send it directly to the vatican at uh, synod uh, us at synod.va so all this now this is the way the pope wants everyone to participate and to have a say okay so well, Bishop, if, you, if you could give us some insight how uh, this consultation is going to take place uh is it a is it a kind of a question ad that's going to be sent out uh is it an online uh on, on a uh, platform that people can participate of course for example for, exa for instance those who are already in the inner circles of the church they will have access to this uh, what about those who are who are not, uh, you know, within the confines of the church? How do we, uh, how do we get consultation from them? Uh, do you have uh, some insight to that? As I said, um, this is all going to be on the social media. It's available to anyone, uh, in, whether you like the church, you don't like the church, you like the leadership of the church, you don't like the leadership of the church. You will have an a possibility of expressing whatever you want to express okay but of course it's going to be guided eh? it's going to be guided as far as the official channels are concerned because we have received the document telling us uh, what are the 10 areas that the pope wants to consult us about okay so there is a certain uh, discipline for those who want to follow the discipline okay the pope wants to consult us on 10 areas and it is all going to be presented to all of you very soon through our committee. It is already on the CBC MSP website. All this is already available there, okay? And there are 10 thematic uh, topics that the Pope wants to ask you to tell him uh, how you are journeying along uh, with these 10 themes. The first is called the journeying companions. It's a very general thing, huh? It's rather interesting how he puts it. Uh, who are the ones who are journeying together? And theoretically, it can be any Catholic. And since it is uh, on, 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 uh, online, actually anybody can join in. The second is a process of listening. He's asking us a couple of questions on what is the quality of our listening. Uh, the third is on the need to speak out. Uh, with freedom, with truth, and with charity on whatever uh, top things that you think are important for the church. Then he mentions the fourth is how we could celebrate this whole thing, how we could celebrate it at the bottom right to the top, how we could celebrate it. The fifth is uh, asking us a couple of questions on how we are together co-responsible for the mission of the church, for the mission of the church. The sixth is dialogue, 
which is very dear to us in Asia. Uh, dialogue uh, with society, with people of other faiths, dialogue of life, dialogue of cultures, so on and so forth. The seventh is ecumenism. What is happening as we try to reach out to our Christian, other Christian brothers and sisters? The fourth is uh, authority. How is authority being exercised in the church and our participation? And the ninth is, how do we have mechanisms for, for discerning and deciding in the church? And the last is the need for formation in order to give, everyone needs to be formed to become a participatory synodal church. <laughs> anyway, these are the 10 topics that he has given us. Well, hopefully Amen. all this, every Tom, Dick and Harry in the church. So we have seen it. Uh, just give you a short uh, 17 minutes of it. You can find the, the whole thing in the Catholic Bishop Conference uh, YouTube. So it takes about one and almost one and a half hour uh, video about it. So let's continue. Christ loved us and has washed away our sin with his blood. He made us a line of kings, priests to serve God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And the of Mary, and the Fawn. The Lord has come to help us, his servant. Let's remember his mercy, the mercy uh, my soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He look on his servant in the lowliness, and for all ages will call me blessed. The mighty works marvels for me, holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age, on those who fear him. He put forth his arm in strength, and scattered the proud hearted and cast the mighty from their thrones, and raises the lowly, and fill the starving with good things, send the rich away empty, and protect Israel his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abram and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord has come to help us, his servant, as remember his mercy. Intercession For the Church that we may journey as companion, side by side, one another, on the same road, we pray to the Lord. For listening ears, that our hearts and minds be open to listening to others, Without prejudice, we pray to the Lord. For the gift of speaking up, that we may be encouraged in this synod journey to speak with courage and parousia, integrating freedom, truth and love, we pray to the Lord. For the church that celebrates, that our journey together in the coming months will be based on listening together to the Word of God and a celebration on the Eucharist in the communion of the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Our participation in the mission of Christ that through our synodal journey together we may grow in our shared responsibility of the mission that is entrusted to us and pray to the Lord. 
for true dialogue in the church and in society, that through a path of perseverance, patience and mutual understanding, we may be attentive to the experience of persons and people. We pray to the Lord. For the unity of Christians, the dialogue between Christians of different denominations united by one baptism may radiate with new brightness on this synodal journey. We pray to the Lord. For the exercise of authority and participation in the people of God, that the synodal roots of the Church will bear fruit in new ways of being at the service of one another at all levels of the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For our discernment to be led by the Holy Spirit, that all decisions made on this synodal path may be discerned through a consensus that flows from our common obedience to the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. for spirituality of journeying together, that we may be formed as disciples of Christ, as families, as communities, and as human beings, through our experience of this synodal journey, we pray to the Lord. Say the prayer of the Synod together, and stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather today, together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts, teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful, do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance let us down the wrong path, nor partially influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise Christ. Our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. O oh God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you, yourself, are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith, we may truly obtain, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for joining uh, in this prayer. Tomorrow, as the Synod starts in Rome, we will shortly, in a week later, uh, start our journey to together. Hope everyone will participate. Thank you and good night. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.